Hi, hello, hi. So, today we are going to be talking about top surgery, but we're going to be talking about post-op scar care. Uh, specifically, I'm making this video because I have EDS, which um, means that I scar really intensely. And uh, so the things so the things that I tried post-op, the things that were successful, were less successful, things maybe that should be used in combination, all that good stuff. I don't have all of my supplies with me. The supplies that I don't have with me, I'll just insert a photo of. So I had top surgery with Dr. Charles Garamoni. So I'm going to be basing all of this off of my post-op experience, but um, I'll also be mentioning where to get a lot of these things like in a pharmacy so that if your surgeon didn't give them to you, but you want to try them, you can. So my surgeon suggested massaging your scars with bio oil. And once the incisions have healed and you've peeled off the tape, he suggests using a scar guard. So I don't have scar guard with me, but I will insert a picture right here. This is scar guard, and uh, it looks like a nail polish. It's actually applied kind of like a nail polish on your scar. Actually, I'm gonna take off. Why am I even wearing a shirt? I can't really whistle. Okay, so my surgeon suggested massaging the scars with bio oil and using scar guard every day after you shower. So I tried both of those things. I used them for a little while. After surgery with my surgeon, you have this really huge bandage and he takes it off you and he tells you to cut it in half because you only need half the length. And this way you have two post-op binders, I suppose. And while one is in the wash, you could wear the other one, vice versa, so it doesn't get like gross. You could why? Please wash them. So it's an ace bandage, but again, approved by my surgeon. And uh, the way that this bandage works is instead of using clips, it's actually Velcro. So this way you're not putting any dangerous metal objects near your incision. You're just wrapping this around yourself and then Velcroing it shut. I don't suggest binding with an ace bandage, but when your surgeon tells you to after surgery, then yes, do it. Of course, I'm not a doctor, so consult with your doctor before doing any of the things that I'm suggesting, um, especially if they can be potentially harmful if done incorrectly. Bear in mind that again, it took me longer to heal because of my EDS, so my incisions didn't close as quickly as uh, they normally would. My nipples really didn't heal that quickly at all. Like, really didn't heal. I ran out of some supplies, so I'll talk about that. But yeah, so I had to bind until about July or August, so while I was wearing the post-op binder, that's when I was using the scar guard. I feel like scar guard is effective, but the issue is that it peels off so easily. So it's not effective if it's not on your body. So if you put it on and then you just have a shirt loosely rubbing on your body all day, it's going to peel off immediately. So there's no point in using it because your body's not actually keeping it on. Whereas when you're wearing this binder all day and it's on you and it's like, it's not like super duper tight, but it's tight enough that there's no rubbing and it holds everything in place. It keeps the scar guard on for the most part and it does let it do its job. And I did find it to be effective during that time. Uh, so what I used to do is I would get out of the shower and I'd put on my scar guard and then let the scar guard dry, wrap this thing around myself and then like put on deodorant and stuff like that so that everything is really secure to my chest. And then the next day when I would take off my bandage before I would shower, an hour before I go shower, I would take off my bandage and then I would take out the bio oil and I would massage my scars for an hour. So I liked to massage my scars before my shower so that I could wash the oil off. I find that the oil stains your clothes and also if you have oil on your skin then the scar guard won't stick. Nothing will stick. And then when I was done using this binder, or actually even while I was using this binder, I started to experiment with uh, silicone strips. So some of them are legit, like the ones I used were just like off-brand just called silicone strips from CVS, but I don't live in the US so I only used as many as I had and I ordered some online. And they were okay, but they didn't stay super adhesive for long and if I would sweat they would come off and you know, I felt like they could be more effective and then I found this stuff at Metiform here and these are also silicone strips but they just work way better like I noticed a huge difference when I started to use these on my scars in like softening the scars and all that stuff so usually they come in big strips like this this strip has just already been cut I would cut them into thinner strips like this to put over my scar um, but they come in like a big square and then you cut them to the size that you need my incisions are really long so I would need like two horizontal strips to cover one scar but I found that that these worked really well. I can't tell if it's because they're textured or like, I, I really don't know why, but like they stick better. You could use them several days in a row. I would be able to use these for like four, sometimes five days. Like you take them off, put them somewhere clean. And then after you shower, you put them back on and they stick. So those are great. Then when I was done using strips and also because the strips became quite expensive, although one box would last me a long time, it would last me well over a month. One box would definitely last me over a month, but eventually it became expensive. So I started to try other things. So then I moved on to a different scar treatment. So instead of using scar strips and then massaging with bio oil, I started to use this thing from Lush called the Charity 
pretty pot. Mine is written in French because I live in Quebec. This is it. It's the one that has all of those causes on the top of them and stuff like that. If you read the ingredients, it's really similar to the Dream Cream, but honestly, I tried the Dream Cream and it would dry up almost immediately, whereas this would stay soft. Like my skin would stay soft all day and it was amazing. I would like massage this into my skin like twice a day and this stuff made my scars so soft and so white, also not sponsored. So yeah, I highly recommend this. It costs way less than it would to use strips for a whole year. I did this for a year. I did this until I was a year and a half post-op. I was wearing this every single day. Um, I also did not go out in the sun once. I never, I am serious. Like when your doctor says not to go out in the sun for a year if you want the best scarring results, like he's telling the truth. Every single person I know who went out in the sun, even just for an hour, for five minutes, for 10 minutes, everyone I know who went out in the sun during their first year post-op, they all have darker scars. Their scars stayed dark. And you know, the sun's a pretty powerful fucking thing. It makes a difference. And like, if it changes the pigment of your scar when your scar is still young, that shit sticks with you. I don't know why. So I didn't go out in the sun until I was like a full year post-op. And even at that, I was out in the sun like very little. I went out for one day and I ended up sitting on a beach under an umbrella the whole time because I didn't want my scars in the direct sunlight. I didn't even wear tank tops for the first year. I wanted like, my scars were completely concealed for a year because I know how my body is and how intense my scarring could be so I was really vigilant about that I didn't really lift my arms for like almost a whole year I was like really like arms by my side I, I didn't want my scars to stretch and I didn't want them to be painful because a lot of my scars are really painful and really raised and these scars started off pretty intense but now you know after my scar treatment and after being so careful with them they're not that bad they're like pretty light I mean to be fair I haven't um, been out in the Sun in a year my scars have only been out in the sun for like a day and a half, like in total in two years. So that might've done it because the skin around it has never tanned. The scars have never tanned. And when I do go out, I wear the sunscreen that I wear is uh, 110. So you could see um, it's still a little purple and raised under the arm because that's a, a section that has more motion. My scars to this day continue to occasionally open. This is a mark from not long ago when the scar opened. Here too, this side is a lot more bumpy and was quite painful post-op. This is the nipple that got a little fucked up. So what happened here was um, some of the nipple grafts started to fall off here, but um, my skin had not yet created the new nipple cells underneath the graft. So if you look, this is just a bald spot. This is like this little crescent here is supposed to be nip skin, but it's not. So what I did was I just didn't treat this one area, the scar, I never massaged it, I never touched it, and it stayed dark and like textured. And it kind of just makes it look like I have a whole nipple even though I don't. So, so that was how I treated my scars. Now I'm gonna talk about your nipple grafts. Specifically, if you have EDS and it takes you very long to heal, uh, this is what I did for my nipple grafts. So Dr. Garamoni gives you this little post-op kit. And it's, it's not really anything, it's legit just like scissors and pliers. He lets you take home scissors and pliers, and this is to cut the um, gauze that he gives you. It's like a wet gauze that's usually used for like, burns and stuff like that. It's called Xeriform. There's like an ointment on it, like an antibiotic ointment, I think. Antibacterial ointment, something like that. So what he tells you to do is cut a square of Xeriform gauze, then put your Xeriform square onto your nip, and then spread a thin layer of Neosporin or Polysporin, because we don't have Neosporin in Canada, and then put a Band-Aid. Two things. Firstly, if you are like me and you have tissue paper delicate skin that will tear off your body very easily, I suggest getting band-aids for sensitive skin, uh, band-aids like for kids that don't stick very well. Even getting those like crappy plastic like comes off in the water band-aid, that's the good kush. You don't want those high quality band-aids. Trust me, because what happens is that they will tear off the skin around your nipple. I still have scars from where the skin was pulled off by the band-aid and it's been two years, over two years. So yeah, definitely get like band-aids that aren't that adhesive, like the cheaper stuff, even from like the dollar store, those band-aids are the best because like they don't stick very well and that's the shit you do want. Dr. Garamoni will give you some packets of this, zero form. But it took me way too long to heal, like way, way, way too long. So I ran out of zero form gauze and I panicked. Uh, and I called him and he told me what to ask the pharmacy for. And I brought them the Xeriform gauze and I told them that it's something usually that you apply to like uh, burns or skin grafts and stuff like that. And I told them I had a skin graft that I needed to treat. And uh, so they gave me this. If you live in Montreal or Quebec or Canada, you could go to the pharmacy and they should be able to give you this. It's called Bactigra. And it's the same thing. I'm going to show you. 
in here, it's in this little packet, you open it. On top of this plastic, there is a gauze and it is covered in ointment. So, I mean, usually you'd be much cleaner than this. I'm literally on my couch, but it's because like, I'm not freshly post-op. So you have this thing, you use your tweezers, you peel it off. Then you have this gauze here and uh, you just, you cut it into a square the size that you need. You don't have to make it too big. There's no point in covering more than you need. So just cut a tiny square. Usually I could cut this in like four and it should be good for four days. But like, I don't know if the nips are a bit bigger then you might only be able to cut it in half. Just like, you know, cut the size you need. Then you put this, a smaller size on your nipple. You put polysporin, spread it out to the corners. Make sure the whole thing is wet, but it's not over soaked. Then you put your bandaid on. So that's what I did because my nipple grafts took too long to heal. And I didn't want to just let them, like I, I would have probably lost a nipple or lost way more of my nipple than I did here. Had I not continued with the zero form gauze, it, it made a huge difference because one is preventing infection. Two is keeping the grafts moist and alive and promoting promoting cell growth underneath the graft. Once the graft is gone, if your body hasn't built those new cells under it, it will not build the cells. Like that you need the graft there to make those cells. So I asked Dr. Garamoni before I got these, I didn't just march into the store and do what I wanted. So you could always ask your surgeon about these. I'm not sure if other surgeons who don't use Xeroform gauze would suggest that you use this. I'm not sure. Again, I, I could only have surgery with one surgeon. And uh, that's it. Like I said, I stayed out of the sun. I didn't even wear tank tops. I hardly moved my arms. I moisturized my and massaged my scars several times a day for over a year. And when I do go out in the sun now, I still hardly go out in the sun because I don't want my scars to darken. If I do need to go out in the sun or if I'm wearing a tank top where my scar is exposed, I wear 110. Like I wear like baby sunscreen on it and that seems to do the trick. So that's it. If you want to go out in the sun uh, before your, your post-op, by all means, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was at least somewhat helpful. Just a little something to add at the end. A lot of people after surgery are going to have uh, chest acne because your chest is concealed under this thing. And even if you keep this thing really clean, it's just you're sweating and your skin isn't breathing and uh, there's dead skin that builds up. So it's normal that you have acne. If you like, what you could do is um, the soap that I used was an antibacterial soap. Uh, any soap that doesn't have actual soap in it but still it has antibacterial properties like spectrogel and stuff like that is probably safe for your chest to check with your doctor first uh, so I did that and uh, once it was safe like once I was like several months post-op but like I had lingering acne because that's a thing that happens because once acne starts sometimes it just sort of spreads I started to exfoliate my chest again with a face wash this was like six months post-op so like there was no risk of it affecting my results in any way everything was healed it was just like you know to get rid of the lingering acne I found that using an exfoliating face wash with with uh, Spectrogel really helped to get rid of some of the dead skin and to get rid of any leftover acne. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. And uh, let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week. Take care. Bye.